back in 85, 86. St. Patrick's Day in March 86. My best GA yeah, memory uh, would probably be winning the county final with my with my club there uh, in 2016. Uh, I think that 2002 Leinster final win uh, against Calair, full house, age Reed Hills and Crow Park wasn't open that long. I think that was the first year where it was actually sort of full house crowd and uh, we've been seven years waiting for the Leinster final so after beating Mead in the semi I think and Calair in the final, just getting over the line that was it was an unbelievable feeling. It felt like an all Ireland then and crowd spilling onto the pitch and trying to make our way up to get the cup was a memory I don't think I'll ever forget. Uh, probably Sigerson, we won the Sigerson there in 2011. Um, it's probably my first kind of major or kind of trophy, yeah, so it's, that was good crack. Good crack to the UCC lads. My best GA memory was probably winning the FAILA under 14 with Hollerone. A uh, small little club, 600 people, and uh, we won the club all Ireland at under 14 level. Bet Sarsis from Cork in the final and uh, the Christy Ring Trophy came home. Well, fail are some of my greatest memories as well, and I could talk to you about greatest memories all night, but there is something else that I want to get to. And I want to talk about the role of the media in the GA now, I suppose that, you know, Karen, I'll come to you first. All three of you have experienced as players, and obviously as, as media as well. So, you know, what's your take on it? Have you seen the, the media role evolve over the course of your career? It has, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's certainly heightened. It's it's getting more, and you you know you're throwing the, the social media into it. Mm. Uh, you know it, it's just more out. There's more papers. There's more people writing. There's more opinions. Um, social media is brought that you can hear everybody's opinion mm. now if you've got an account. So media is um, is has always been a huge part in promoting the game. And you know longer the days where there was two national papers and one local paper. Now everywhere there's two or three local yeah. papers and there's an amount of national media out there. So. But it's important for the growth of the game, obviously, to get it out there as well. But for me, I was always very open with the media. I was very relaxed with them, never saw them, was never really paranoid about them. Might have got stung once or twice, maybe stayed away from one or two fellas after that, but normally very relaxed with them and never, you know, I think we see the odd time there's an interview there and some fella does an interview with someone on a Sunday and then has a poor game that day in the months the final and people say, well, how do you have a good game? He was doing Straight it. Away, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's the yeah. most rubbish. Join the dots, yeah. It's yeah. the most rubbish argument of all time for a fella not playing well the following day. He's probably marked out of it, double teamed. <laughs> you know, he might have been sick. There could be loads of excuses, but I, I hate that personal one of, oh, he's doing too much media and the build up, he'd have bad all out yeah. and finally I just think I, that's the laziest piece ever. I can recall um, before, in, before this 2017 season, Joe Cannon did a massive uh, piece. He did one with, with us that year and he also did a, a massive piece with the Irish Independent. And I have a friend from Galway and he came out with, oh, Joe Cannon has done his, his usual big piece. You know, that, why does he do it? Galway are going to bottle it again. And I just remember being so delighted for Joe Cannon when they won that All-Ireland. Um, because he, he's being himself. You know, he's not doing anything different. And, and of all people, Aidan O'Shea is a player who gets the criticism as well um, whenever things go wrong. But they stand up they're not afraid to say what they want to say. And on the field, they are always allowed to stand up. Sometimes they mightn't have their best game, but them mm -hmm. lads are always the ones who stand up. Mm. So it, it's sort of the media is, is how it's, <laughs> it's with a double E G uh, in, in, in lyric. So the media is it's crucial. It's critical to the game. You will not uh, you will not have I suppose in, in terms of I suppose sustainability and growth mm -hmm. for your game. You won't have it without the media. It's it's essential. Um, I suppose what you're talking about there, like, the media love the marquee players, mm -hmm. and the marquee players will get the attention. And because of that, then there's more pressure on them, and it's easier. It's very lazy to throw that uh, accusation yeah, okay. up. It's the media that led to the poor performance. Or you're essentially putting the loss or the win or whatever on one person, and, and it's a team sport. So that gets my that's stuck in my craw a small bit. In general, uh, you've mixed experiences with the media for me, anyway, as in like for different levels of people. So some people are very comfortable with it. Case in point, mm -hmm. here and that, right? Some people are very, very comfortable and have and have been their whole careers, and it's nothing unusual to them. They've got good personality and good charisma. Anyway. Other fellas, it's they're allergic to it because they're just very private people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a teammate of mine, Andrew O'Shaughnessy, one of the best players I've ever played with. Very private, very, um, I suppose, reserved when it came to outside people. If you're if you knew him well, you knew that he was a great character. You knew he was great fun, and he loved to laugh. But you know, you didn't necessarily see that from the media settings. He just didn't want to. He, he just, that wasn't his thing. Uh, so, you, so different different guys would have different approaches to it. And because of that, you might have a general painting of approaches. So you might have uh, some managers would say like, nothing. It's yeah. all out. We lock it out. And I can actually see the point in that because so, for some fellas, it is a distraction and it's hard to deal with. Other fellas are like, this doesn't bother me. Well, let's do it anyway. And what about the if relationship? You, then if that you can't trust, if you can't like, if you can't trust somebody to come out and 
like, if you can't trust somebody to say something in the media, like, you mm. know, or it's got, you think, oh, we, we'll keep that fellow away from it. Like, if he can't take doing an article, how is he going to take playing in front of 80,000 in front of his, him? His, his job or his role is to kick a ball or to hit a ball. It's not to answer questions from in front of him. So you play, I played Rubor underage to, to to hopefully play for Limerick. I didn't play it so that I might actually get on radio or, <laughs> or, or have a chance. Or get on air sports. <laughs> or have a get on air sports. You know, I, I don't know why this has happened. To be but the, the reality is, the reality is like, this isn't, this isn't a, you know, an expectation when you're aspiring. It's something that comes with it. And I suppose it's something that, you, you like that now, if you can't trust a fella to say something, what's, you know, how good is he going to be? I understand that, but have you equipped him with the tools? Have you equipped him with, the, like, the training and communications or something like that? Even basic. So, listen, this is a standard line we throw out for these kind of questions. If you're not comfortable asking it, just say, yeah, great game, love being involved in it. And throw out the standard line if you're not comfortable with that question. If you are comfortable with that question, answer it as Seamus Hickey and run with it. But do you feel then, like, because obviously you've had a good relationship with the media and you were honest and you were yourself, do you find that you lose a little bit of the authenticity then if you are just throwing out the one-liners that it learns off? Yeah, I think there's certain teams and, and players and managers that are very much by the book and throw out the party line and you, you don't get a feel for them, you're not going to read the piece, you know, there's not, there's not mm. going to be anything interesting, you're not going to find out anything about the person. So it's, it's almost a kind yeah. of a... It's 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 a it's a nothing article really, or it's a nothing interview. I think there's a bit too much of that going on. I think we're very paranoid as a nation about, oh Jesus, if I say this now, they'll yeah. all think this and they'll all think that. Whereas yeah. they, as he rules, I watch a lot of it, and they'll be doing interviews, walking off the pitch, nice and calm. Mm. How do you think the game's going? We weren't great in the first 15 minutes, but you know we picked it up there near the end. But and it's very a matter of fact, like, walking in, we're nice and yeah. relaxed. Yeah. There's no it's, big. It's strange. It's consistent across sport. Like uh, like the, so, like the New England Patriots won the Super Bowl there mm. last week or the week before. They're horrendous to the media. Like, you know what I mean? So they just, they are box on, blinkers on, the everybody, coach, everybody the outside. Coaches. Exactly. Yeah. Belichick just is just a nightmare to deal with. <laughs> One well, word answer. I suppose, I mean, Eamon, you're coming from the unique perspective. You are the player, and also, Zell, you're in the media. So, like, what's your take? Is it frustrating? You know, you need the stories. That's your, your job as a journalist is to get the stories. So, do you feel then if there's a wall built up that it's harder to get through? Yeah, yeah. Well, from. From my, from my perspective, um, a lot of players, when you be contacting them, there is that kind of, you're almost trying to convince them first before you're trying to convince them that they can trust you. And I'm lucky enough that I played with a lot of players, so there's kind of that trust there initially. But, um, yeah, like these, these still players nowadays, no matter how, how much the game changes, there's still players who have articles up on their on their kitchen wall, you know, and that's, that, that's still things that people mm -hmm. like. So I still think the players like to have that element of it. But for me... Basically, Gaelic footballers and hurlers nowadays, they're, it's a very, they obviously have a lot of, a lot of um, plaudits and, mm -hmm. and for one and they get to play in front of the crowds and stuff. But it is, it is difficult in a lot of ways in terms of their socialising and there's a lot of pressure on them. And these are young men that, you know, you're, you're, it's coaches' responsibilities to make them better players. But for me, you also want to be improving them as young men. Personal and in, development. Like personal yeah. development. Mm -hmm. And if you can't trust a player, it seems in the way in, in, the, in the game now, you can't trust a player to think to, to maybe be able to more than just mark his own. You can't trust him to think. You can't trust him to, to be able to gauge, I'm going to have a few drinks after a game at this particular time of the year. And you can't trust him to do an interview with someone. It doesn't, doesn't say much for... And it, for me, it's, a, it's kind of a, a thing that we have in the GA. It's like you'd often say to someone, oh, uh, geez, you're looking very strong there. You're doing much gym. And no, no, I wouldn't do much gym. And it's like, no, you are. You're in the gym all the time. Would you not just say what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of an Irish thing, but, but the, it's but a the GA thing, thing that is, I trust my player unequivocally. Uh, and he goes out and he says something. And then the headline doesn't relate to the content mm -hmm. of the piece. And then there's a trust element broken. Yeah. So, you know, that has happened a couple of times. So the journalist is quite in earnest yeah. and he gives it, and then the headline doesn't reflect at all. And then you go back the, into the, the body, camp and people The body of the interview or the, yeah. the actual, the, the text is, is, is I suppose, shortened or abbreviated and you don't actually get the meaning of what the person was saying at all. And then they said, right, I'm done with that. Yeah. So that's the flip side of it. So you can say, you know, do you trust the player to come and say, yeah, I actually do. I trust that fellow to go and say anything. I don't feel I trust the fellow he's talking to. Yeah. So that's where the manager yeah. is coming from. Now, like, from my own perspective, you know, I've generally been very open with it and open with the media and stuff like that. And I've, I've, I've so I enjoy talking about hurling. So if people ask me a question about hurling, I generally talk about it. Yeah. So like, Would you have used uh, the media articles as motivation? Yeah, with the odd time. <laughs> um, the odd time, they, and they are pieces that you know, journalists might write about you or your team that, you know, you just, of course, you, 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 you use everything. And, uh, um, but that was, that was when people are writing about you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is more about, you know, engaging with the media and having that kind of open relationship with them that, 
you know, I think the less paranoid you are, the less, you know, that you yeah. may be, they may think that you're out to get them or that they're yeah. going to come after you. But I think as, I think as a nation, it's just something we need to just relax on. <laughs> like, it, social media can be a bit tricky, but mm. but uh, the rest of it's okay, I think. Well, speaking of media, we've noticed a certain Mr. Brogan and Mr. Danny have been trading blows on Twitter over your respective all-time 15s. Now, let's take a look at what's been said here. So, can I do believe that's your tweet? Can you verify that's your tweet? Yep. Carry all day at Air Sport at Alan Brogan, which Alan Cheeky replies, well, that's what they said in 2011 as well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, there's been a lot of talk around your, your 15. Are you happy enough with it? I'm happy enough with it, yeah. You might make one or two changes. I just say, if I gave you two transfers, well, I was actually out last Saturday night after the Kerry game and I saw my corner back, uh, Mark O'Shea, on the, <laughs> on the lash, so I'd probably drop him and uh, bring him to Moss. To Moss is very well behaved. I'll move, pa move Paddy back to the corner. Um, Bomber Liston was also out Saturday night and he was well on it, so he's gone as well. Maybe bring in John Egan and maybe go for a small inside line, maybe. But it doesn't matter what effect it is, anyway. You know, it's fairly comfortable. So there's your team right there. Well, yeah, that's, that's the Dublin team, but the Kerry team I picked will beat that Dublin team all day. You reckon, I'm pretty, yeah? I'm pretty sure, even with the changes, even with the late changes. And we'll do what Dublin did last week ahead of the Kerry Dublin game. We'll, <laughs> we'll cause mass confusion in about five to seven. <laughs> Send everybody into disarray. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it all nice and tidy till late on, but uh, not our two good teams. But of course. Did it take you long now to pick that team? It did. Myself and Colin T and my boss in PST were coming up in the car two hours, <laughs> arguing over it. Who's there? Who's there? He actually wanted Pat Spillane in instead of Paul Galvin. Um, you know, he was just saying the eight All Ireland medals and Pat could do similar stuff to Paul, but it was a, a good debate. What did you make of it, Eamon? Yeah, um, I can't really argue with many of the decisions you made. For Dublin, for me, leaving out Brian Fenton, leaving out Kieran Kilkenny, um, especially if they win five, if they win this year, mm -hmm. it would look mad. I uh, might have maybe put Kieran Whelan into the half forward line there and definitely be having Brian Fenton in there. And Kieran Kilkenny, you know, he's, he's the man who makes this all completely. I think there's sick. a bit of loyalty on both myself and Ellen's part. <laughs> with, like, you've been in the trenches with fellas, you've been in the battle, the wars, yeah. you know who you're picking. So I think there was a bit of that maybe in it as well for both of us. Well, I don't think we've heard the last of that now somehow. Just time to remind you that we have live coverage of Cork against Clare from 6.30 on Air Sport 1 this Saturday. And we'll be back at the usual time of 7pm next Wednesday for Allianz Leagues Reloaded. My thanks to Kieran Donaghy, Seamus Hickey and Eamon Dunhu for their insights and of course for the banter as always. Thank you at home for watching and we'll see you all again next week.